Hey y'all. How y'all doing? You should know me by now, but if you don't, I'm Crystal pursuing the glow in motherhood, in marriage, and in life period. I'm just trying to get my glow. That's all I'm trying to do. So I figured I'd just pop in and talk to you guys. I really don't have a topic, but um, I guess I'll just share how my day went so far and some things that I'm dealing with. And um, yeah, so as the time gets closer for me and my family to move, I am really in a place where I have nothing but my faith in God, y'all. Because, you know, this is a part of my life that I'm dealing with where I have to learn to release the control that I'm always trying to have. And I have to learn to trust in God. So if you're watching this video, I will say that I am a firm believer in God, not because of it being the way that I was raised. I was raised in church. I'm a pastor's kid, but I love the Lord. Okay. So if you're not about that, you can easily exit. But other than that, yes, you're going to hear me talk about the Lord all the time because if it wasn't for him, y'all going to make me start shouting in here. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? So I am definitely in a place where I am learning to release all control of my life. And um, I've always had a problem with trying to be in control. And it took me a while to even realize that the control that I was trying to have over my life and over my husband's life, over just how life was going in general was a chaotic type of control. So me having control wasn't helping situations. It was making it worse because I was so worried about what everybody else was doing, what everybody was thinking of me. I had, it was that type of control. And now God is really showing me that crystal, your plans are not my plans. Your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Right? Look, my homie calling me. <laughs> but um, I'm just really in a place where, you know, I'm learning to release control and take things day by day. And I've been reading this scripture. Uh, let me see if I can find it real fast. Yeah, I know. My storage is full. Thanks for letting me know. Y'all, I don't know about iPhone. I really don't know. But as I find this verse, I believe that I highlighted it. Um, I actually found it when I, my in my last Bible plan that I was reading. I think it's called 100 Days to Brave or um, something like that. I'm actually going to buy that book because it's like a devotional. But this was a five-day plan. And, okay. So, the scripture is James 4, 13 through 17. And this is the message version of it. And now I have a word for you who brashly announced today at the latest, tomorrow, we're off to such and such a city for the year. We're going to start a business and make a lot of money. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. Hello, God. Because God is saying, what you know about tomorrow? You need to worry about today. You don't even know what's about to happen tomorrow. So why are you... Okay. He God just slapped me in the face. Right? Right there. And you know what's crazy is I read verses over and over. And you know, I know everybody experiences. If you read your Bible, you can read a scripture and it means nothing to you. And then you read it again however much time down the road and it's like Lord you've been saying this to me all this time 
you really been saying this to me? So this is one of those verses. I think it was because I didn't really understand it. But now because of the season or the time of my life and the things that I'm going through right now, this verse stands out. So there's always going to be a time if you read your Bible and you're seeking wisdom, there's always going to be verses that apply to your life at the moment. And then at another, I mean, all of the Bible applies to your life, period. The word just applies, period. But there are just certain verses and scriptures or whatever that pertains to you at the time. And this is me. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You're nothing but a wisp of fog, catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills it and we're still alive, we'll do this or that. As it is, you are full of your grandiose selves. All such vaunting self-importance is evil. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do, do it, that for you is evil. Hmm. So, if you guys don't know, you don't know, because I really don't talk about it. I feel like I really don't want to talk about this until it happens, which will be in a couple weeks. But I'm moving. I mentioned it briefly in my last video, um, but I want to do a very ex like extended, extensive, so that means the same thing, video talking about how I almost ruined this, because I did a video on how I almost missed the answer to my prayers. And this verse or scripture pertains to that because, it, and it pertains to me releasing the control that I'm talking about. Because sometimes when you think you have control, you really don't. And you're doing nothing but ruining your family. You're ruining yourself. You're ruining your family. You're ruining your life. You're calling your destiny. And that's pretty much what I was doing. So I would always feel like I needed to be in control. So I always had the way that I wanted my life to look. And I wanted things to go my way. But for some reason, none of my, a lot of my stuff never came to pass. But right now, I'm really going through a time where the Lord is like, this is what's about to happen with your life. So all your plans and whatever you had going on is not about to happen, girl. Because I'm about to do this and this is what it's about to be. You either listen to me or you continue to go through chaos and, all, and you continue to have control with your control and self. That's, that's what, that's what he was saying to me. So he called me grandiose and all y'all. He called me grandiose, everything. He said, I'm vaunting my self-importance, which was my control that I was trying to have. And he, it wasn't the right thing to be doing because I was focusing on myself. I wasn't worried about everybody else. I just wanted the control. I wanted this to happen. Like I said, for the move, it was just, can we just move? Can I just get out of my parents' house? That's all it was. I moved down the street, whatever, just I need to move. That was me having control. That was me just focusing on me and what works for me. And God is saying, like, you got your plans, but you're not even putting me in it. And then, second of all, you should be saying, if the Lord's will. And then, third of all, it's like, I'm a wisp of fog. Y'all know how fog just travels right on through. Fog just be traveling right on through in the mornings. And then by the time the sun come out, it's gone. And that's what he is saying. He is like, you're just a wisp of fog, girl. You're just passing through here, getting a little bit of sun. That's all you're doing. And you think you have it all together. You ain't even saying, Lord, here go my plans. And I wasn't. I was not saying, Lord, here's my plans. I was saying, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This. I wasn't saying, Lord, here you go. I surrender. This is what I desire to do, Lord. And if, it's a, if it aligns with the purpose that you have for my life, then I would appreciate it if you made this come to pass. But I wasn't doing that. I was just like, I wouldn't even put in the Lord in it. I was just like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm doing this, 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 and this, this, this tomorrow, next week, next year. This is what I'm going to do. And we're about to make this happen. And I will fail every single time. And this is why I'm going to do a video talking about goals. Because now that I've read this scripture, it's not even looking at it as goals. I look at it as my if the Lord's will list or if the Lord's will vision. Because... Yes, we can make vision boards and we can set goals, but 
you could be like me and set so many goals to not accomplish them and fail because I didn't put him in it and then be disappointed. Then that's how you get stressed out and that's how you go into depression and that's how so many things start happening. The chaos, that's how it happens because you're not seeking God. And in motherhood, we need the Lord. Yes, we do. We need God. We need to pray. We need to seek him. And that's just that. Like we make all these plans to do these things and we leave everybody out. We don't think we think about ourselves and it's not right. And what I'm learning is I don't need to set goals until I can learn to release control to God. So now I'm just learning. It ain't even about learning because I'm I've learned. But he already, you know, broke me down already and had to teach me the hard way. And we can avoid having to learn things the hard way. We, sometimes we can avoid going through so much heartache and, and, and um, hardship if we just learn to take things day by day. You know, as I pursue becoming an entrepreneur and trying to balance this motherhood and balance marriage, I have, it's important that you learn to take things day by day. Or you will be over here stressed out, taking out your hair, skin looking a mess, tired all the time, yelling at your kids, fussing with your husband because you want things to go your way. And that's not what it's about. Like, then start at home first. And when your home is straight, then maybe you can worry about you know, what it is that you would like to pursue. But anyway, I'm getting all off the topic. But y'all, I just wanted to come in and talk about that. I just love to talk about what I'm going through while I go through this journey of this, like this transition and motherhood and marriage and how I'm handling it all and how I'm trying to literally do a complete 360 in my life so I could just fulfill my purpose. And... I've released goals. Like I've heard a lot of people say nobody set New Year's resolutions this year. Nobody has set New Year's resolutions this year. They don't set them and goals and stuff like that because, you know, the statistics, you know, they say by the end of January or whatever, the, the goals and the resolutions are gone out of the door. And that's true. And I have failed so many times with me. I, well, I think actually I've never been a goal setter. Like I've never set goals and put times on them, but I just write out things that I would like to do. But still, you know, if I do set set a goal or anything, I would fail or I would let it go or I would allow life to happen to me and I forget about everything. And that's the way that I failed at it. And God was just saying like, you have to release control to me. Learn to let these things go because that was my problem too. I would, I would hold on to things that I didn't accomplish and it would affect me so bad because I would feel like a failure. I would feel like I failed myself. I wouldn't think about nobody else, not even my kids, you know? And I have to learn that, okay, that didn't work. Time to try another way. Don't go back to trying to, to keep trying to do the same thing only for it to not work. Like if you keep doing something that's not working, that's what I was doing. I would go back to the old things like, no, I have to make this work. I have to make this work. I have to only to keep putting myself down in a hole because I'm trying to do what Crystal want to do. <laughs> Y'all. So taking it a day at a time and trying another way, and releasing the control, and just do. Like it said, if you know what to do and you don't do it, that is not right. That's not right. So that's what I'm dealing with, y'all. Just <laughs> I just wanted to pop in real fast because as this time get closer, like I said, for me to you know move and move my family, I can honestly say I don't have the control and I got to take it a day at a time. And this is definitely a lesson for me. And this is the lesson to be able to learn how to handle things as they come. Like events plus response equals outcome. And that was what I talked about in my Instagram stories yesterday that our children are watching what we do. Our children are watching us and how we respond to things. And if they see you respond to things out of frustration and out of hurt and pain and 
you yelling at them out. They're watching the rate, the way that you respond to situations. And I'm learning that too. I am learning that too. So I have to stop setting these goals or, you know, stop trying to have all the control when I'm not really in control. I have to start over. I have to start fresh. I have to take another approach. I have to do things differently, Crystal. Duh. Like, stop trying to do everything the same way all the time. It's not working for you. It's not working. You know, that's what I'm telling myself. But look how long it took me to even learn this lesson. That because I didn't want to let go. And when you don't want to let go, that's you trying to have control. Only to just ruin yourself. Like, I've ruined, not, I wouldn't say I've ruined my health, but I have put myself in some very complicated positions health-wise because of my control. I didn't want to let go of the past. I didn't want to let go of emotions. I didn't want to let go of how I was doing things and that will keep you crippled, meaning you will cripple your family and you don't want to be that parent that be like, um... I didn't do this, 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 but here's how you should do it. Yes, you can teach your children. I will always say that. You can teach your children, but me, I have to lead by example. I would tell my kids, okay, you can do it because I did it. I did it. I want to be able to have a story to tell when I am encouraging my kids to pursue all the th all of the things through Christ. I want to be able to have a story to tell them how I did it, how I pursued all things through the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So, yes, so many different topics in this video, but I just wanted to come in and talk about how I was feeling because, you know, I just met with my friend. I just got back. You know, I needed that. I needed to get out and I needed to talk to her, have that conversation with her and just talk about things. But when I first started the conversation, I was so down and I didn't even know why. Like, I'm just like, why am I so down? Like, why do I feel this way? Like, why? Am I like, woe is me and nothing even like nothing. There's nothing even wrong because if I'm trusting in God and believing that he's going to work it out, like why am I acting so down? <sighs> so Lord, forgive me. But yeah, so this is a part of the glow up, you know, as moms, it takes some time for us to learn some things. It takes some time for us to just grab a hold of what's happening in our lives. And we want to do so much for our children and we just want to give them the best life, but you know, it starts with us. It starts with mom. It starts with dad. They're watching us and we have to really pay attention to the things that we're doing and what we're saying and how we were acting to things. And also just got to teach them like the Lord is good and he's faithful. And if you believe and trust in him and you have faith and you walking around here saying you love God and you have faith in him, then you better show that through your words, through your actions, through your mindset, through everything. You better show that. I'm out, y'all. Cadence! It's time for me to go. She's too quiet. Remember to glow. Remember to affirm yourself. This is the glow up, y'all. Do everything you possibly can to get your growth. Your growth, your growth and your glow. Do everything in your power to glow and keep your glow. Stay true to who you are. Stay true to who you are.